great plagues of the previous centuries were over. Out of the Dark Ages, a revival of the arts and sciences called the Renaissance was in progress. Travel and exploration were beginning to be pursued with great fervor. It is believed by some that Christopher Columbus and his party brought back the germs of the great syphilis epidemic that began shortly after his return. Although gonorrhea had been known in the old world for centuries, the new syphilis germs were far more deadly. This was a time when traders and armies moved across national boundaries, contracting the disease and carrying it with them to new places. Within five years of Columbus's return to Spain, the disease had spread to as far away as Scotland. Thirteen years after his first voyage, Christopher Columbus himself died of syphilis. Countries named the disease after their enemies. In France, it was Le Mal de Naples. And in Naples, is a call of the French disease. I'm afraid, old man, you have a case of the Spanish pox. Rotten luck. An Italian doctor wrote a poem about a poor shepherd boy named Syphilis, who was cursed by the gods and plagued with the disease. The name Syphilis comes from this poem. There was no cure yet, and treatment ranged from baking in specially built ovens to liberal doses of mercury compounds. There was a saying in those days, I warn you, young man, a night with Venus, a lifetime with mercury. It has been estimated that during the height of the great epidemic, Nearly half the population of Europe suffered from some form of venereal disease. From the beginning, everyone knew that these diseases were spread primarily through sexual intercourse. Yet kings and peasants alike spoke openly and honestly of their affliction just as we today might complain of the flu or high blood pressure. After all, what shame was there in being ill? In the Victorian era, however, a new morality covered the subject with a veil of secrecy. Mike, at any moment, be exposed to temptation. Temptation, my friend, temptation of the flesh. Thousands were still dying of syphilis. Yet newspapers were forbidden to print the words syphilis or gonorrhea. Advertisements from this time avoided words like syphilis, gonorrhea, or venereal disease. Sands natural snake oil formula will cure, yes I said cure, the suffering. Because of embarrassment, people were afraid to go to their doctors. Home remedies and patent medicines were commonly used. And the loss of manhood from blood disease. All this for just one dollar. By now... By the beginning of World War II, there was still no cure for gonorrhea and only a partially effective treatment for syphilis. Nearly 200,000 American men drafted for the war were found to have syphilis, calling attention to the widespread nature of the disease. Treatment, though more effective than the mercury of the 16th century, was difficult, lengthy, and uncertain. An English doctor named Alexander Fleming had discovered a mold that seemed to destroy bacteria. 
Due to the war, experiments with Dr. Fleming's discovery were stepped up. The result was a drug called penicillin. There had never been anything like it. Mass production was now underway. In 1943, penicillin was used to treat both gonorrhea and syphilis. The results were spectacular. How serious is the VD problem? Let's compare it with some other diseases in the United States today. Over half a million teenagers in the United States now have gonorrhea or syphilis, and the number is rising. We now have more antibiotics than ever before, more certain cures. Yet we face a national and international epidemic. Why the epidemic? What are your attitudes toward venereal disease? There are millions of germs on this slide that can only be seen with a high-powered microscope. These tiny organisms called spirochetes are the germs of syphilis. Last year, over 90,000 Americans had these kinds of germs attack their bodies. Because the spirochetes survive best in a warm, moist environment, the sex organs are ideal for them. The symptoms do not occur or from 10 to 90 days, and they take the form of a sore or a painless ulcer where contact was made, usually on the penis. The disease is acquired by sexual contact where the environment is warm and moist. The sexual contact must be between an infected and non-infected individual. Well, I got it. And I guess about four weeks after I had this contact with a girl, I got a shanker on the, well, it, it was a sore. It was fairly small. It looked like a, uh, kind of like a scabless score, sore. It was ugly. It really was, but I didn't worry about it a lot because it was painless. And I thought at the time, like, I, I might have syphilis, but I didn't worry about it again. Where, where was the shanker? It was on the head of my penis. And I thought I might have had syphilis, but I didn't worry about it because there wasn't any pain, and maybe two weeks later, three weeks later, it disappeared. You may think that the disease has disappeared because the early sores have disappeared, but this is not the case. Let me show you what I mean. We shall use this rabbit for our experiment. As you can see, the back of the rabbit has been shaved. We shall inject a small number of organisms just under the skin of the rabbit at each of four sites on its back. It is a painless procedure and will not cause the animal any suffering at all. Let's see what happens. If you do not get treatment when the first signs appear, the symptoms will disappear. But remember, the germs are still in your body. Now, however, the spirochetes circulate through the blood system. If a woman has syphilis, it is unlikely that she will see any outward signs. 
It may begin as a painless sore deep inside her. Anywhere from six weeks to six months after the first sign of syphilis, new symptoms appear. This woman has a classic case of secondary syphilis. Her arms and hands have broken out in a rash resembling measles. Her lymph glands may be swollen, and she may have a low fever. Some patients even have a sore throat. Both men and women go through this stage. These symptoms will also go away without any treatment whatsoever. At any stage of the disease, if a mother carrying a child has the germs of syphilis in her blood, the child can be born with syphilis. If a person is not treated for syphilis after the secondary stage, the spirochetes begin a long resting period. They are still in the body, but do not seem to cause any trouble for a long time. The patient may think he is cured. It may be five, ten, or even twenty years before there are any further signs of syphilis. Then when it flares up, it can be a killer. For some reason that we don't completely understand, the germs begin to attack blood vessels, heart tissue, skin, bone, the nervous system, including the spinal cord, and even the brain. Syphilis can cause blindness, heart disease, deafness, insanity, and loss of motor control. And the sad thing is that in each of these instances, it is unnecessary because prompt treatment can prevent all of these clinical symptoms from occurring. So I came and see the doctor, and when the doctor saw what it was, he told me it was gonorrhea. People get gonorrhea by having intercourse with someone who already has the disease. Just like syphilis, it is a venereal disease. Well, it was a milky substance which came out of my penis, and having a hard time trying to urinate, you know. And it was very painful, very painful. This is the organism that causes gonorrhea. As you can see, it looks completely different from the germs that cause syphilis. Gonorrhea, or the clap, as some people call it, is the most common venereal disease. The gonococcus multiplies much faster than the syphilis germ. Following the very short incubation period of two to five days, there develops a yellowish discharge from the penis, and there is considerable pain involved upon urination. The characteristic pain that occurs uh, is something that we in the field are rather grateful for because it takes the youngster to the physician. Otherwise, he may not go to the physician. In the female, however, there will probably be no symptoms. Without a special physical examination, most women have no way of knowing that they have gonorrhea unless a sex partner who catches the disease tells them. And I think she was the one who had the gonorrhea. So she, what she said, she was kind of embarrassed too because it was her first time and she didn't know. I think she was giving it away like I got it, the way I got it from her. In a woman, the gonococcus attacks the reproductive organs. The damage can make it impossible to ever have children. Sometimes it can even kill a pregnant woman. In the male, gonorrhea usually occurs in the urinary tract. Its damage can make it very painful to urinate and cause dangerous pressure on the bladder and kidneys. It can also block the passage of sperm from the testicles, causing sterility. Both men and women in later stages can contract gonococcal arthritis, making movement of joints difficult and painful. However, there is another important way in which the disease is transmitted. In the case of gonorrhea, this transmission does not occur until the time of delivery. And as the baby slides down the birth canal of the female, the organisms enter into the conjunctival sac, that is, into the eye. 
and produce serious disease. Every child born in a hospital in the United States has special drops put in its eyes at birth. Thanks to this standard treatment, infant blindness from gonorrhea is rather rare. The earlier patients with either gonorrhea or syphilis are treated, the less damage will be done to their system. Many people, however, do not get treatment. What do you think can be done to encourage people to seek help? And what can women do who may have a venereal disease and not know it? And coincidentally, at the same time, an official from the health department came down to talk to me because I was named by a girl that had been treated by them for syphilis as a possible contact. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see the doctor today? Yes. All right, this is your clinic card. Okay. Can you take a seat and someone from the clinic will call you with that number. Okay, thank you. We asked you to come in today because um, someone that has syphilis has named you as a sexual contact and we're worried that you may have the disease. Well, um, I'm, I've been feeling perfectly fine. I haven't... You haven't uh, had any fever? No, I haven't. Any haven't. sore throat or so in the last couple of weeks? No. How about a rash on your skin? Have you noticed a sore anywhere? No, I haven't noticed anything. That's why I can't understand why, you know, this is all going on. Well, you may very well uh, have syphilis and not know it. Uh, uh, you very definitely have been exposed, though, to someone that There's has early syphilis. I'm just, I'm just wasting your time because uh, I, had a, I had a sore about two weeks ago, and then a friend of mine who'd gotten some pills from the health department said, take these and, and uh, see what happens. So I took them. The sore disappeared. And, uh, you know, I feel fine. There's nothing wrong with me. So... You know, I don't understand why I had to come down here and, you know, waste your time and money and everything else. You know, I, I don't really understand. It's fairly impersonal. They've got a job to do. They want you to get rid of syphilis, so they treat you, but there's no moralizing with it. Oh, one thing, Doctor. Does my family or anybody in my home have to know about this? Because, you know, it would... No, they don't. Home. Don't worry about that. It is tr it's true you're under 21, yeah. but uh, you were able to sign your own consent for medical care here today and there's no necessity for telling the parents unless you want it done. I, no. would, I, would, I no. would prefer you could talk it over with them, but if you don't want us to notify your parents, we certainly won't do okay. it. You yeah, don't have to worry be... about okay, that. Okay, that's fine, as long as that's straight. You, I, can, I mean, if I've still got it, can you, can you cure me? Or, or am two I going to have it for of penicillin, or Two injections of penicillin a week apart, we can clear you up of, of syphilis. They pump you for your contacts, but, you know, that's fine. They don't hassle you at all. If you go out and have contact with any of these people again, you're going to get syphilis again. Now, the only way I can help you is for you to make sure that all these people get in and get treatment. Now, who was the very last person that you had contact there. with? Gave me another blood test after the end and said I was cured. Something was wrong, like I had a kidney infection once before, and, you know, I was having pain. But I don't think there's anything wrong with me. Well, this is not unusual in, in females who have contracted gonorrhea for them not to have any discomfort. You but mean this usually happens? This usually happens in the early stages after they first contact gonorrhea. Now, if a female gets gonorrhea and doesn't do anything about it, it will tend to spread up into her uterus and out into her tubes, into her ovaries, and then she has a whole lot of pain. This is a uh, rubber prophylactic that's sometimes called a condom or a safe. It's important to uh, see a pharmacist and purchase some of these products so that uh, before you uh, engage in sexual intercourse, uh, you put this product on the penis, uh, keep it on the penis as long as uh, sexual intercourse continues, uh, when the intercourse is over, uh, the condom should be removed, and uh, you should wash your body following the uh, exposure. Another way is to use um, a special vaginal cream, such as this substance here, 
uh, this substance can be inserted in the vaginal area and it will prevent you from contracting a venereal infection. Is there any way at all that I can just get the medication without having to go through all this hassle? Uh, it's really a drag, you know. I've had it so many times. It isn't a drag. It isn't a drag at all. Every time you have gonorrhea, your urinary system is damaged. And if you keep on getting gonorrhea, one of these days you're going to be in serious trouble. What kind, what kind of damage are you talking about? Is soon, sooner or later, you're going to find it very difficult to urinate if you keep on getting repeated gonorrheal infections. Oh, well, once you start having sex, they forget about it, I think. <laughs> Everybody forgets about it. Yes, uh, what you do before you start anything is uh, try to prevent. Well, how? Uh, you can prevent venereal disease by uh, limiting your sexual activity. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Well, then you can have fewer sexual partners. No, I don't think I'm going to do pick that a, either. Pick a sexual partner that you can trust. I'm not ready for that. Mm. No method of prevention is 100% certain. If you suspect you have been exposed to a venereal disease, contact your physician or local health clinic immediately. The only way you can be sure you do or do not have a venereal disease is by having a physical examination and the proper laboratory tests. Venereal disease affects every segment of our population. Because many forms of contact can transmit the disease, there is an especially high rate among homosexuals. Unlike most epidemics, venereal disease is a hidden epidemic. How can it be stopped?